welcome to the little disk detainer shutter lock that I got from a friend of mine who was in Malaysia recently. He bought it for 2 euro or 3 euro or so, it was very cheap. Again, the brand is Stella and yeah, works perfectly. As I said, it's a disk detainer lock, so it opens and closes. Um, I tried to pick it with this Chinese disk detainer pick, but First of all, I'm not very experienced, but I think it's a disc container lock that tensions from the bottom. So with um, this piece of the key, because here we have cuts um, on the front, at the front. So I think that you cannot pick it with this tool unless you are skilled like a lock picking lawyer, for example. Um, I want to have some fun with this lock and I will start with a fun by reading the instructions or the advertising statements. So let's have a look what they write. It's a wise choice, Stella security lock and it's particularly designed for security, so it's always good for a lock. It can, contains a good character, maybe you will find out later what character it has inside. <laughs> And is especially suitable for important places such as warehouses, office, homes and others. I would be interested in what they think, what other places are important. So it's um, against the versatile key. The internal construction of the lock has been innovated and modified from the usual ball to the special multi-layered one. So multi-layered, I believe they mean the discs, they um, are stacked in layers. So that's what I think that they mean. In effect, the versatile key cannot open the lock in any way. Yeah, I've tried that with a rake. They are right, it doesn't open. All right, what do we have here as next? Against sawing, hardened steel shackle cannot be cut by a saw. We will test the shackle if it's really hardened, but it spins freely, so that means if you wanna cut it with a saw, uh, you would need to grab on it to hold it while you cut it. So what's next? It uh, cannot be prized, praised or prize or pride. I think they mean pride. The device, oh, that's a device, isn't it? Is made from very hard R steel, mm, whatever, steel ball to pin the shackle. Okay, so there is a steel ball inside to pin the shackle. This is very strong, therefore it cannot be mm, pried open, probably. And against drill hardened lock shaft cover cannot be drilled. So cannot be drilled. We will see. All right. What can we do with this lock? As I said, I cannot pick it with this tool, but we can have some fun with this lock. And I want to first get it ah, disassembled partially without destructing, without destructive methods. So you can see the shackle here stops and there's something inside. This um, hole here um, indicates that and I think there is a pin. Or <laughs> what do I say? I know that there is a pin because I've opened it before and we can open it by using a shim. So I put the shim inside of here and then try to turn it around. And so now here it's off and we can see Oh, it's already out of the... Ah, here's the pin. So this pin pushes against the groove when you retract the bolt and so the um, the bolt will stay in place and not come out all the way. And of course there's a spring underneath and uh, some metal balls. Here's the spring that goes in the hole here, which is located... yeah closest to you and there's another hole uh, in the back and this hole in the back is used to accept these three metal balls. So we have the spring and we have the pin for uh, retaining the, the shaft here, the bolt, and we have these three metal balls and funnily they have a different size and 
they are of different quality. You can see two of them, which are bigger than the other one, and the other one, it's even not round anymore. <laughs> or maybe it was never round, and it has a dirty color to it. Looks a bit rusty, or uh, it has suffered from corrosion, let's say it like this. And these three balls, they um, make up the link between the uh, rotating element here and this part of the of the bolt to get it locked up. So I will put it back in and then we can see how that works. So let's see. So currently the lock is in the open state like so and when I lock it up then the barbarian, the metal ball comes out and prevents the bolt from uh, being uh, retracted by coming into this groove here. So let me quickly reassemble the lock and we will continue with the exploration. And we are back in business. Works just like before. So now I cannot pick it um, and as we have read and uh, I've tested it, it's against the versatile key. I try something else because I think these cheap locks are susceptible for a very very easy uh, type of attack, the prying attack with a screwdriver. So I think we can just open up this lock by pulling out this um, cap here. So let's test this. Or maybe it's not that easy at all, I don't know. I've not tried that before. Oops. Now it comes out. I don't want to hit the camera <laughs> when it comes out, so I want to be careful. But I think it, it will come out. Oops, okay, here we go. So carefully pulled out the retaining cap and here we can see the, the wafers. So I'm not sure if I am able to get this back together once I pull all this out. Maybe I can just thread this on here. Oh, many wafers and there is an additional one. That will be a puzzle to get this back together. <laughs> Looks something like a, a meat um, a skewer thingy that you put on your barbecue, on your grill. <laughs> okay, um, put this to the side. And now we have the lock. Well, empty I would say. Nothing more inside. Can we pull the no, uh, the, the bolt? We cannot. I think we need to rotate this here somewhere around. And now, now we can just retract the bolt and the lock is unlocked. So easy it is to pry this out. And now let's look at the character of this lock. <laughs> Ah, there's still something inside that we can pull out. Or oh, maybe that's the character of this lock. Um, it's a, oh, it has a black soul, looks like. It has a black character. And there are these metal balls. Okay. So, it looks like we are starting. I'm starting to make a, a mess here. Let me sort out all these parts and I'll be back. Um, in a second and uh, maybe I can tell you more about these uh, wafers and so on and so forth. So I managed to get back all the discs and spacers into this black tube here. And I can quickly explain to you how the disc detainer mechanism actually works. So what we have here is the lock body. It's almost empty, only the bolt and the retaining mechanism um, remains. And inside this big chamber here, we can see a cutout. And that's for accepting the sidebar. Um, 
and the sidebar is located here on the other side and when the lock is in the locked up state the sidebar um, looks out a little bit and has its place in this groove and that's the reason why you cannot turn the whole construction when the uh, lock is in a locked up state so, meaning the sidebar is not retracted has not fallen into so what we need to do um, to open up this lock is to turn this whole black thing here because this has a flat part and a round part on the end um, goes like so and when the flat part is aligned like this the barbarian stack here has um, enough room to fall down and give um, free the room um, for the shackle to be pulled out and in this orientation there is less space left so the ball the metal balls are pushed into this uh, groove here and so the um, bolt will stay in place so how can the sidebar fall in oh, well that's um, the job of these discs because they have grooves or cutouts where, um, on specific positions and specific angles um, compared to the um, middle cutout and the key will align all these discs so that the grooves of all the discs are then aligned uh, with this cutout. I can show this to you. So put it in like this and then Turn it and here you can see they are now all aligned so that the grooves all meet at this place and then where is the sidebar? The sidebar falls in like so. That's the yeah, state where the lock is um, unlocked and now we can turn the whole construction. And turning the whole construction works with these uh, nipples on the on the discs so this is the locked up state you can insert the key you can push it in and now you turn it and that's the position of the key where the sidebar is has fallen into and at the same time some of these discs discs um, push this black piece here with their peaks here on the uh, on this side here of the of the black piece and so that it turns um, around and as I said in the beginning I think it's not tensioned from the from the top it's not true you can see the first this disc does um, does cause the black piece here to turn so there is tension from the first wheel I was just not skilled enough uh, to pick this lock <laughs> All right, so that's about how these disc container locks work. And now what remains to do is to see if the um, lock body and the shackle are really hardened. I need to somehow store this safely and then I will be back in a second. All right, you can see I found a secure way to store the discs. And now what remains to do is to see if it's really hardened, the body and the shackle. And therefore I use my file and see how deep the grooves are that this file leaves and so let's see maybe that hurts someone but it's uh, all in the name of science well this does not look hardened <laughs> and I think the shackle is also not hardened I grab it here and oops, As you can see already it leaves some deep marks. This is also not hardened, however, as I said, it's quite cumbersome to cut this through, and um, to do so, you would need to hold this with a um, pair of pliers or so and then you can uh, use a saw to cut it. Well, um, I think that's really it now. Oops, sorry, wrong direction. Um, yeah, was quite some fun to explore this lock 
and that's the uh, worst thing on this lock I believe that the cap comes off so easily other than that if this was not plastic but um, steel the lock was actually not not really bad but this is really a no-go to be able to pull it out just with a screwdriver and some prying force well makes this lock actually uh, useless I would say anyway thanks for watching happy picking and bye bye